Hello, folks, and welcome to a brief lecture on the structure and anatomy of a leaf. You're going to need to know a little bit about this terminology and the anatomy of a leaf to better understand how photosynthesis takes place, because the leaf is the photosynthetic machinery of a plant. Now, what you see behind me is a typical leaf. The large structure is called the leaf blade. If you follow me here, the leaf starts down here with a stalk, which is actually called a petiole. And the petiole is what attaches the leaf to the, to the stem of the plant. Inside the petiole is vascular tissue. These are tubes that are not unlike your own blood vessels. They carry, instead of blood, however, water, nutrients, and food that the plant makes to and from every cell of the, of the leaf. The midrib here is the main vein that branches off into the side veins. And each of these side veins gets smaller and smaller, feeding each one of the cells in, inside the leaf. If we take a cross section of the leaf and look at the cell layers, here you see a top layer of cells called the epidermis. It's typically one cell layer thick, and the epidermis is on the top of the leaf as well as on the bottom. So we have an upper epidermis and a lower epidermis. These cells secrete a waxy substance called the cuticle, and the cuticle keeps the leaf from drying out. If we look on the bottom layer of the leaf here, we'll see these specialized cells around an opening or a pore. The, pore are, the pores are called stoma, and they allow air to enter and exit the leaf. On either side of the stoma are guard cells. And these guard cells can control the opening by either closing it or having it remain open so that air can get in, in and out. Now this is important because in times of extreme heat or dryness, those guard cells need to close that pore so that the cell doesn't lose any excess water. If you were able to shrink yourself down and enter the leaf here, you would notice there's an awful lot of empty space. This layer here is called the spongy layer and is supported by these cells called spongy cells or parenchyma cells. And they're, they're simply there for structure. This layer is actually like the lungs of the leaf because it allows for gas exchange between the cells and the air. You know that plant cells need carbon dioxide in order to do photosynthesis. They also need to expel their oxygen while they're doing that. At night, when there is no light, the plants need to do respiration. So in the same sense, the stomata and the spongy layer allow for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide gas. Here in the blue you see the vascular bundles, and the vascular bundles have these tubes. Uh, on the top side we have what are called xylem. And the xylem carries water all the way from the roots into the leaves. Below are similar vessels, but they're called phloem, and they are what carry the the sugar made by the cells in photosynthesis to an area of storage in the plant. Toward the top layer you see these elongated balloon shaped cells. These are called palisade cells and the whole layer is called the palisade layer. You see the green structures on the inside. Those are the chloroplasts and those are the organelles that are that are functioning in photosynthesis. Around the vascular tissue are what are called bundle sheath cells, and they play an important function in some, in some plants. And this next diagram is left unlabeled for you to label by yourself, so treat it as a, a little quiz and as a, as a tool to study. These are living plant cells under the microscope, and about all you can really see are the cell walls and the chloroplasts on the inside. You get an, an appreciation for how big the chloroplasts are. This is an actual cross-section of a real leaf with biological stains, of course, showing you the different, different layers. Here's what the vascular tissue looks like in a real leaf once it's prepared. You've got the spongy layer down below with the spongy cells. Here, over here is a stoma with the guard cells on either side, another vascular bundle, the palisade cells, and of course on the top and bottom are your epidermal cells you might even be able to make out the thin, clear cuticle layer of this plant. So there you have it, the basic structure of a leaf. 
Knowing that anatomy will help you better learn the process of photosynthesis. We'll see you back in class.